If you want to save money on your cloud bill, one of the easiest things you can do is move your workloads to ARM nodes. In the last few years, ARM usage and support in the major clouds has increased dramatically, due in no small part to energy and cost savings. In this video, I'm going to show you how to move container workloads to ARM by using multi-platform builds. A multi-platform build basically means you end up with a container which can run on multiple platforms or architectures, and this makes it really easy to move to ARM node instances or even support a mix of both ARM and Intel nodes. This is the 2023 Datadog Container Report, and it shows that within a year, usage of ARM instances more than doubled. They attribute this change to 20% cost saving from moving to ARM. Now this report is a year old, so I'm interested to see how much has changed when a new report is published, which is due out now. But a point I'm trying to make is that orgs have started shifting their workloads to ARM and it's only going to increase in pace. So if you've not started supporting ARM already, it's probably worth taking a look at it soon. Before I dive into code showing you how to do multi-platform builds, I want to explain what a multi-platform image actually is or actually looks like. The way it works is that a multi-platform image will return something called an OCI image index to a Docker pool. And this index contains entries for each platform the image supports with digest to download platform specific images. So the Docker client will do a Docker pool and read this index, select the appropriate image for the host architecture, and then do a second pool for that specific image. In reality, a multi-platform image consists of multiple independent images for each architecture and a little bit of metadata to find the right one. But all of that's normally invisible to the user. So how do you build an image like this? How do you make images for multiple architectures when you possibly only have access to one architecture? Well, thankfully, Docker now takes care of most of this hard work. But there are three basic options. One, you can use emulation to emulate other architectures. Two, you can use cross-compilation, and I'll explain what that means. And three, you can use native builders for each platform. So let's go through each of these options in turn, starting with emulation to the terminal. So I have an example project here with several Docker files. And you can get this code and follow along if you'd like. It's all on GitHub. And you can get it from the ChainGuard dev images byte back talk GitHub repo. And I'll also link that in the description below. Now, I have this Docker file. It's a very simple Docker file. It's a multi-stage build for a Go application. So all we're doing is copying in the Go code and building it and then copying it into a static uh, image for production. This is a pretty standard multi-stage build. If you want to know more about multi-stage builds, I do have other videos you can go and look at, but that's not what we'll be talking about here. Okay, so I can build this image pretty straightforward. I can just do docker build. I'm going to give it a tag. In this case, I'm going to go multi-platform test. I'm going to push it to the registry. So dash dash push will push it uh, out to the registry rather than build it locally, if you like. Oh, I'm going to also add in no cache. So you see how long it takes. OK, so now we're building this image. Uh, this is the go build step. It takes a, a little bit second to, to build the code. And now we're actually already pushing it up to the registry. OK, so now that that's on the registry, one thing I can do is I can ask, use the crane tool to look at the, the manifest or image index that's there. So I'm going to type manif crane manifest and give it the name of this image we just pushed and see what it looks like. Now, I'm doing this on my local Mac, and it's a M1, so it is an ARM64 architecture. So for that reason, Docker has built and pushed the ARM64 image. And there are no other images in this image index. There's um, This is just an attestation that BuildX created and added. OK, so this is obviously about building for multiple platforms. How do we add? 
how do we build for more platforms? So I can add this dash dash platform argument. And I can put in whatever platform I'd like to build for here. So we've already built for ARM64, but we'll leave that in and we'll add another one, which is going to be AMD64, which is your x86-64 architecture. So let's build and push that to the same tag. Now, we've got to the run command. Uh, interesting thing here, let's compare how long the ARM build takes to how long the AMD64 build takes. And you can see it's considerably longer for the AMD64 build because that's been running, because that build is running in an emulator. So ARM64 build took about five seconds and the AMD64 build took four times as long. Okay, now we're exporting to an image and uploading it to the Docker Hub. Okay, that's done. And if we run crane, ma crane manifest once more, what do we see? Yeah, so this time the image index has two images, the ARM64 one and the AMD64 one. So we've success successfully created multi-platform Docker image. So if I was to do Docker pull on this laptop, I will get the ARM64 image. If I was to do it on an Intel laptop, I would get the AMD64 image. The next question is, how did it do that? Well, if you do docker build x ls, I have these sort of multiple builders, if you like. Uh, so if you run that, you probably saw something similar, at least if you're using docker desktop. Um, and you probably had a list of the various architectures that you can build for. If you're not on Docker Desktop, um, you might not have got that. You might just see the list of architectures for your local machine. In which case, what you have to do is register the bin format handlers for Docker, which looks like this. Basically, it's an image you can run that will take care of it for you. And once you've run that image, it will set up handlers for all the various builds on various architectures. And the way it does that is it uses the magic of QMU. So there's a really amazing project called QMU that can do emulation of all these different targets. And that is amazing. It works, but there's a big problem and you saw it in this example. So the example that I, I just showed you took four times as long to run the emulated build. And that's understandable. It's doing a lot of work. It's having to emulate, emulate a whole different architecture. And it's amazing you can sort of do this at all. But that's also really slow for even a really trivial application. So in a real sort of production setting, you're not going to want to use QMU. And if you're not using QMU, what can you do? So your second option is to use cross compilation. So in this case, I have a cross Docker file. And this is set up to use cross compilation to build the binary for different architectures. So the way this works is we have this, we're using special Docker variables, in this case, build platform. And what this is doing is it's tied the image in this case to only run for a build platform image. Okay, so in my case, that's gonna be ARM64. And regardless of the target that we're building for, it's always gonna run this part of the image on the build platform. The next thing we have is this target OS and target arc variables. So these are the, the, the architecture we want to build for. So that can be different to the build platform or it can be the same. And then in the go build step, we can see we're using the target OS and target arc commands to go build. It's going to tell go, go which architecture we want it to build for. And the Go compiler doesn't really care what architecture it builds for. It'll happily do it for whatever architecture you tell it. And then we take that built binary and we copy it in to our static image. Now, note there's no dash dash platform command here, so this will use an uh, image of the target architecture. Now, that works and doesn't require emulation because in this case, there's no run command. If it had a run command, we would need to use QMU again. Um, but in this case, it's just a from command and a copy command. So that's all just file system commands that don't require emulation. And if we take a look at building again, if we use this docker build command. This time I've told it to use cross.dockerfile as a docker file, but we're still building for two platforms. So let's see what happens this time. 
Okay, so we're at the build step. So we can see both the build steps here. We have the ARM64, well, that went really quick. Um, we have the ARM64 build, and we have the AMD64 build, and they both took about 5.4 seconds. So they both executed in pretty much exactly the same time, which is really impressive. We just got rid of all that overhead from running uh, emulation. And we've pushed it up to the, the Docker Hub. Um, let's take a look at that image again. And it should be exactly the same as before. Well, with a different digest. Uh, but we've got the ARM64 version and the AMD64 version. Cross compilation, I really do recommend this solution. Can save you a lot of time on builds. There is still a bit of a gotcha. If we take a look at this version across xx.dockerfile. I'll show you what I mean. So um, the Go compiler is perfectly happy to build binaries for other architectures, but sometimes you need libraries for different, for dependencies. So for example, imagine I needed the Zlib dev uh, dependency. If I just naively apk add that, I'm gonna get the version for my host architecture when I want it for my target architecture. So that's not gonna work. But there is a project called XX. Uh, it's from Tonus, who is the same person that built Docker BuildX. And if I copy its XX tools over, running XX-APK will take care of getting the correct version of the library for the target architecture. I'm also using XXGo, uh, and that's going to take care of basically of this substitution up here. So if I use XXGo, I don't have to do the, the target OS, target arc bit. It can get more complicated if you have dependencies that you require for your build. So your third and the final option we're going to look at is running your build on a native runner. So by that, I mean running your ARM build on an ARM node and your AMD64 build on an AMD64 node. Now, Docker BuildX actually does have support for farming out builds to nodes of the, the correct type. So if I do Docker BuildX LS, um, you'll see this multiple builders and it lists which, which platforms they can build for. Now, I can set up my own build farm with nodes of ARM64, AMD, and whatever else. Uh, but in this case, I'm actually gonna use the Cloud Builder. So we're gonna use a product here called Docker Build Cloud. It is something you do have to pay for, uh, but it is pretty amazing. So I think it's worth showing in this case, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my build and I'm going to tell it to use dash dash builder cloud emote, emote default. So that's my Docker build cloud instance. And otherwise, this is exactly the same as before. We specify the two platforms and we're using the old Docker file. OK, so if I hit run, it takes a little second for it to uh, connect to the build cloud, but once it does, I get here and you can see my AMD64 and my ARM64 builds running at the same time. Um, and I think this is probably the fastest of all the options. So build cloud is definitely a good option. Before I finish up by talking about running multi-platform builds and CI/CD and GitHub Actions, I want to touch on image choices. If you're running multi-platform builds, you have to make sure that your base images support multiple platforms which isn't always the case. But at ChainGuard, we build all our images for both x86-64 and ARM64. So you're always safe choosing the ChainGuard base. Our images are minimal and security focused with zero CVEs. And I put a link in the description where you can find more info. Final thing I want to talk about is CICD. And for that, we're going to head back to the terminal. So if you go back to my test repo and we go into GitHub, workflows. Um, I've defined a whole bunch of different workflows showing the different kinds of builds. So if we look at the QMU one, um, it's fairly standard and nothing too surprising going on. I do do a few other things like use cosine to sign the images and add metadata, etc. But the main thing is the Docker build and push action, which is here. And here we can see I specified two platforms. But if we just go back up, note the setup QMU step. You need that step to specify the handlers for emulation. 
So nothing too surprising there. But the one I really want to call out is the build and push runners. So if you use Docker Build Cloud or something like Depot, uh, that takes that will take care of your build for you. But you might want to use your GitHub runners to do your builds. In which case, it gets a little bit more complicated because you need a separate runner for each native build. So in this case, I've got an ARM build, which runs on my Linux ARM for testing nodes. And I've also got an x86 build, which will run on x86 nodes. There's two jobs, well, three jobs. The first one's ARM build, which you'll see down here runs Linux ARM64 build. And then we have the x86 build. And we'll see down here that runs Linux AMD64. So now we have two separate containers and we need to stitch them back together. So I've got this third job here called manifest which depends on the previous two builds. And what that's going to do is it's going to get the digest for those other two images. And then it's going to call this docker manifest create command. Uh, and it's going to give the image a name. And it's going to point it to both the x8664 digest and the arm64 digest. And then we use the docker manifest push command to push it up to registry uh, before finally signing it with cosine. So, if you want to use the GitHub native runners, things do get a little bit more complex, but still doable and much better than using QMU. Yeah, please use either cross compilation or native runners rather than QMU, just because you're going to be wasting so much CPU if you're using QMU and CICD. Okay, that was the final thing I wanted to show. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, please subscribe and I'll see you for the next video.